Very good morning once more. Lovely Saturday here in Bangalore. Hope you are also enjoying good weather wherever you are. Today, as you are aware, we are going to be taking up a topic which is a little different from what we do on most of the Saturdays. We talk on Saturdays on topics which are directly affecting human relationships, emotions, how we are leading with our life, what are we doing with various uh, aspects of our well-being. So those are the type of topics which we normally focus on. This time we have taken up a slightly unusual topic because not from the legal or the administrative or even the educational point of view as to what is this new education policy and rules, regulations. No, we are not bothered about that. And that is the reason why, uh, you know, I even gave the blurb new education policy adapting to change what we are concerned about is firstly to be aware of how it affects us and secondly how uh, we can adapt uh, to it so those of you who are parents or teachers are obviously very directly involved in the whole process as a teacher you will have to adapt yourself to all the changes that are going to uh, come in very fast because as you know at least karnataka has been one state which has immediately taken it up and said that we are going to start implementing it right now with the other states it will be maximum i think one year by 2022 it will come into uh, play and uh, you know most of these states at least i feel will uh, start implementing either in toto or at least to some extent they will start uh, uh, you know implementing these uh, things so I've been following, obviously, as a person who's directly interested not only in education, but more so in the children and the young uh, people of our uh, younger generation. More so, my interest lies primarily with children in our country. So how we go through with this education for our children is what is important to me. And I think it's important to most of you. Even if, for example, you have a child who will be going abroad to study, whatever it is, you know, you can't forget the roots of India. Maybe your child will come back, whatever it is. And in general, also, I want you to be aware of what is uh, the new education policy, what are the changes that are likely to come in. So I'm not going to go into the jargon of, uh, you know, the whole preamble and these and that. As you know, it is hundreds and hundreds of uh, uh, pages. Those of you who are academic oriented and who do want to read it, it's available on the internet. It's in the free domain. You can download, you can start, you know, reading it up and studying it from the academic uh, point of view. My focus, as I mentioned in the blurb, is how do we, uh, you know, adjust to uh, change? How do we adapt uh, um, ourselves to the change that is going to be coming uh, uh, in particularly in the next one year two years whatever so let's start with uh, uh, that as i mentioned if you are directly uh, connected in the form of being either a teacher or a parent of a child who is in school or college then yes you need to know it immediately my hearty welcome to those of you who are not directly connected in the sense you don't have a child in school or college and you're not an academician or a teacher and yet you have logged in today I would like to sincerely welcome you and congratulate you because I feel that you will be a sort of ambassador to propagate what changes and how to adapt uh, to it. It is said long back that there was a uh, you know, seminar, a world conference or something of that uh, nature where they were wanting to know which is the society or which is the country which has the highest potential for good progress in future. How do you determine that? 
somebody said those countries which have got oil you know they'll be the richest and they can do whatever they want somebody said no no oil will get exhausted those who have the best technologists for example you know because it we have entered the it era and those who have the best of technologies though that country or that society will be the one which will progress uh, most somebody i am told came out with a wonderful uh, suggestion the society or the country where the adults take maximum interest in the upcoming generation that is the society or country that will have the maximum potential for growth and fulfillment and that is what brings us to this topic of today as you know i need not repeat we had a wonderful gurukul system for thousands of years it had a lot of advantages maybe a few disadvantages all we needed to do was to adapt to the few disadvantages and uh, then we could have moved on but then the british came in and they brought in what is now referred to as the macaulay system of education which was primarily intended to produce good clerks and assistants and was not directly oriented to producing much better qualified or capable uh, natives as we were uh, called by them doesn't matter they have left us 75 years back once they left and we started waking uh, up we started bringing in certain uh, reforms we said we are now independent we are a country we are a society which needs to govern ourselves and we need to do whatever best we can for our younger generation so we will bring about certain things a lot of effort went in one pioneer in this field who has not actually been given his uh, due was by the name of molana abul kalam azad nothing to do with apk uh, abdul kalam uh, he was the first education minister of uh, india and he was a visionary for about 5 or 6 years he started working on plans how to review and revise the entire education uh, system and unfortunately he suddenly passed away and as it usually happens with you know implementation of policies and strategies at the national level when a new person comes in then he has an old different thinking and he doesn't want to give due credit to the previous person and all that and that got diluted i really wish that he had been around for a longer time he would have been able to do a lot anyway starting from dr s radha krishnan who was a pioneer in the field of education he himself was you know a full time teacher starting from the basics of teaching going right up to becoming a vice chancellor founder of a university and all that he rose up from there became vice president and president and actually we even celebrate his birthday as teachers day he was another pioneer who did amazing work in the field of education but what happened was that we are such a large and such a diverse country the trying to bring in one size fits all is extremely difficult and that is what slowed down the whole process smaller countries more homogeneous countries brought in a lot of changes in their education system in india we have found it very very difficult the ghost of you know our uh, uh, lord macaulay still haunts us in the form of teachers who are so outdated that they still tell the children when you come into the class just shut your mouth sit down quietly listen to what i am saying write down the notes go back home and read the notes and come back and put down those notes in the answer sheet of the question paper i am uh, just now watching those of you who are interested in education i think you should watch there's a very lovely serial going on on netflix uh, which is called kota factory there's a lot i can tell you about what's happening in this kota business and this craze for iits and all this anyway there have been visionaries there have been pioneers who have been telling us that the world does not revolve around jees and neets and that there is a much wider world at the first instance let me tell you that our country and our education system has expanded so beautifully that anybody who has an interest in any topic any field any uh, career and he or she is good at it that means his interest is backed up by the necessary talent and aptitude the person can do wonders that is where the expansion has taken place it is true 
that 50 years back, for example, there were hardly a few careers which guaranteed a stable income, respect and promotions, like being an engineer, being a doctor, being a lawyer, being an IAS officer, you can count them on your fingertips. Over the years, it has expanded exponentially. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of uh, you know, careers today which you can take up if you are good at and overtake the other traditional uh, uh, fields. But how do we implement it is the question. If the education system still brings you down. Before I come into the NEP and what uh, it promises us and what we can uh, do, I also want you to please be aware and proud of the fact that our Indian education system, which is not liked a lot by students, many students are quite frustrated. They say, why do I have to study so many subjects? Why do I have to mug up so much? Why is it that we have so many exams one after another? I do agree that that's not an ideal system. But if you look at the end result, today Indian boys and girls are doing wonders all over the world. You name it. We have CEOs of Microsoft and Google and Pepsi and so many uh, you know, top-notch companies right up to you know, our own uh, Kamala Harris who has now become Vice President of uh, the United States of America. The stream is endless. So many innumerable Indian doctors. The, I'm told that the British uh, you know, healthcare system survives on Asian doctors. If all the Indian doctors one fine day decide to pack up and you know, leave UK, the entire healthcare system of UK, I'm told, may collapse. That is the type of contribution that we are doing. And who are these people? These are all people who have gone through the outdated traditional Indian education system as it exists now. Yet, that is no excuse for us to keep working on a backward thing. So. Time and again, some reforms, some uh, you know, changes have been uh, brought in and they have been for the positive. One of them, which I have always uh, admired, we are now nearing 30 years since the NIOS was set up, National Institute of Open Studies. That was a revolution for school children who are a little different, not necessarily backward. It did help a lot of children who are backward also. But it was different. It offered so many uh, you know, wonderful abilities to children who were good in five out of six subjects but were failing in sixth. It offered uh, opportunities to children who had other extracurricular interests. They may have been sports people or arts related people who wanted to spend more time in doing that and yet continue with the education uh, system. All these things have happened. Some of these advances, changes, betterments that have come in over the years, unfortunately, have not reached the common man. You'll be surprised. You can try it out and see. The moment I mention, would you like your child to go through the 10th or 12th standard through NIOS? They either say, we don't know what is this NIOS. I don't want to take a chance. Or they say, I heard it is only for handicapped children. I heard you know, that is something which is very, very dangerous. I heard from whom? No, my, I think it was my cousin. I'm not sure. He was telling me that his uncle told him that he has an old friend who is uh, something to do with education. And he was telling me that it is meant for handicapped children. It's so ridiculous as that. So all of you who have taken interest to log in today and who are participating in today's program, I would request you to be the brand ambassadors of the reforms in education, what we can do at an individual level. Government is doing its best. Government sometimes doesn't do the best also. Sometimes the government takes decisions which are not all that great. Many a time the government takes decisions which are wonderful, but which are for various reasons not implemented. Taking all that into account, my concern lies with our individuals. If you have one child, two children, or if you are a teacher and you've got 30 children to take care of, let us focus on their needs. Okay. So let us, uh, uh, you know, understand that uh, uh, first, very important. Uh, I'm sure many of you are aware of this fact. 
in the last one and a half years since this lockdown business uh, uh, started, it is estimated that about one third of the entire student population of India has been deprived of education. They do not have facilities for online education. That's a huge number. One third of all the children in our country are getting no formal uh, education. There was a report which said 11 crore children are suffering from malnutrition because they were deprived of the midday meal which they used to get when they used to go to the government uh, uh, schools. There have also been sporadic but very reliable reports about the incidence or the increase of violence, physical abuse, mental abuse of uh, uh, children because of the uh, lockdown. The other thing that has happened, which you may be aware now with the school slowly reopening is many children have lost interest in the school form of uh, learning. Yes, they would like to go to school to play games or meet up with their friends, but they are no longer interested. They got so used to sitting at home, you know, happily doing whatever they wanted to. Now, if they have to get ready, put on their uniform, pack the books, catch the bus, reach their own time, be directly in the eyes of the teacher who may scold them if they're not doing well, taking all that into um, account, a lot of children are not interested uh, in going back to school and uh, a lot of motivation will be uh, uh, needed. Another report said that out of 25 crore, uh, you know, student population that we have approximately in uh, India, the report said, please don't quote me, you can verify for yourself. Only three crore children today are learning at their grade level. If a six year old or 10 year old or 14 year old should be learning and should be proficient at a particular level, they say only three crore out of 25 crore have been you know, assessed to be actually learning. The balance 22 crores have fallen behind. There have been reports from very eminent researchers saying that 18 months of lockdown has not stopped the growth of a child. It has regressed the growth of the child. What the child knew in March 2020, the child does not know it. Nida has said, my son is in first grade and only answers, but amount of writing work they are giving is so much and after so many days, he's not able to cope. These are the various things that are happening all around the uh, place. So with that, I come to the NEP. Let me first, uh, you know, give you a quick overview. I have just, you know, sorted out all the, uh, what do you say, the uh, theory part of it. And I will talk to you about the essentials of what this uh, NEP wants to implement throughout the country. One is that, and I'm very thankful that somebody has thought of it, that uh, NEP will focus towards building an education system, which will work on the core essential, that is, critical thinking, holistic uh, uh, inquiry-based discovery, discussion-based and analysis-based learning. This is something that has been totally lacking. Now the NEP says this is what is going to be our uh, focus. It has also said that the system that we had of 10 plus 2 plus 3 should be changed to what they are calling as 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4. So five years of the foundation in which they are going to minimize the, uh, you know, rote learning and all the paperwork and all that. It will be on basic development of life skills, basic development of the learning patterns of the child. Then the child will go into middle school where the child will take over at the, at the academic uh, level for the next three uh, years. After that, Instead of the plus two that we have, what the NEP says is that we will have three uh, uh, years. That will be the, uh, let's say, equivalent of ninth, 10th, and 11th. Once that has been uh, done, then we will move on to a four-year degree course. That is something which, as you know, has been followed in countries like US and all that. College education, basic degree, is going to be in India also for four uh, years instead of three uh, years. And the uh, focus in the, uh, uh, you know, the, at the basic uh, uh, level is going to be more on the development of the 
child rather than rote uh, uh, learning. Once the child comes to, let's say, the uh, college level, they have also introduced a concept which they are calling ABC. It is academic bank of credits. So I start off with taking up a particular uh, you know, uh, subject or a stream I have enrolled for BA, BCOM, BCA, BSc, whatever it is. But I can also add on certain subjects and credits from other fields. I may be a science student who can take up a commerce uh, you know, uh, subject. I may be a commerce student who can take up uh, some you know, thing to do with psychology or something to do with biology and all. That, that way, you will have an academic bank of credits. To the extent that if it is not available in the college which I am studying, I can go and study that in another college and that credit will be transferred over here and finally I will get my uh, degree. How it will happen, what will be the uh, you know uh, uh, hurdles and all that is going to come in later. Yes, Khadija, your son's college has announced that from this year, that's what I was just telling you, Karnataka is the first state that has already implemented the NEP, therefore most likely even the students who have joined their basic degree course this year which is supposed to be a three-year degree course will finally be studying for four years the other thing about this uh, uh, four-year course is like it was available in the vocational courses only will now be available for everybody and that is you can opt out anytime earlier as you know let's say a student joins a four-year be uh, engineering course he has some six subjects per semester into eight semester he studies about 50 subjects even if he has cleared 59 out 49 out of the 50 subjects he gets no qualification he is still only at 12th standard pass i have come across people who have studied 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 covered more than 50 percent 70 percent 90 percent but have finally lost out now that will no longer be true People who want to drop out at any point, depending on whether they've done one year or two years or three years, will get necessary skill qualifications based on which they can move on and do something else. So that is something which I think is a very positive uh, uh, thing. Also, uh, you know, since we uh, are likely to have four-year uh, you know, degree courses, the uh, master's is going to be brought down to one uh, year. And they have already taken a decision that uh, they will uh, be uh, uh, removing MPhil. So those who want to do MPhil better grab on till it is still available. <clears throat> Most likely within a year or two, MPhil is going to be phased out. So once you have done your master's in any subject, if you want to go in for higher studies, you will have to enroll for a PhD. That is how it is going to go. And that's how it is in various other places uh, also. Technical colleges have been asked to also start science uh, um, programs, which are also going to be four years. So a technical college, which has got BE or BTEC, parallelly will start, for example, a BSc course or some other course. In fact, last week I was in Hubali, where um, I was doing a teacher's training for the KLE University. And they have told me that the KLE University Engineering College has already included in their uh, you know, uh, administration or whatever it is, the LLB course, the law college. So law college has been merged with the uh, you know, uh, engineering college. Now, what does it mean for the students? Those who are doing LLB will continue to do LLB. Those who are doing BE will continue to do BE. But the engineering students can pick up some subject from law. So you see how while you are graduating as an engineer, you can also pick up certain things like tomorrow you want to learn let's say intellectual property rights that you know somebody invents something and has got the patent for it how does he protect himself that other people should not misuse the research and the product that you have brought out so having you know uh, exposure to law and having studied uh, perhaps one or two subjects from the legal side will give them these are the type of options which are coming in very uh, fast similarly Two more things have been um, announced that high performing Indian universities will be encouraged to set up campus abroad. We have a few, but they're very few right now. So now they will be openly encouraged. And what will happen uh, um, is that because of that, 
the uh, quality of our uh, universities and the teaching will go up. One is that they will get better revenue in terms of uh, foreign exchange. They will have more of international exposure. So if you have teachers going from here to there or getting transferred from there to here, we are going to get a lot of learning. Similarly, uh, uh, government says that the selected top universities, 100 top universities in the world will be given permission to open campus in India. So tomorrow you may have a child who will be probably studying in, let's say, Stanford University sitting right here, either in Bangalore or in Chikmagalapur or wherever uh, uh, it is going to be uh, set up. These are some of the things which are on the anvil. It will take time. It won't happen overnight, but we are headed in that uh, you know, uh, direction. Uh, there has also been a recommendation. I'm not sure how uh, you know it is going to be implemented. This you know computational skills, coding skills, and all that are going to be taught from the school level itself. Seeing the amazing and immense attraction towards the IT uh, industry, uh, they are also planning to teach that at the uh, school uh, level. And at the uh, you know secondary school also, they are going to offer subjects which are away from the tradition, which was right now being done only by let's say a few ICSC schools or IGCSE schools or IB schools. Tomorrow, every school, regardless of which uh, education pattern it uh, board it follows, will be allowed to have you know uh, subjects which are not the traditional. What do we have? Science, social studies, languages, maths. So beyond that, we are going to be having thing. Then uh, there's not going to be a rigid separation between art, science, commerce. There'll be a lot of combination of all those things, including even core curricular uh, um, activities. So don't be surprised if uh, your child is going to say that I have gone to college and I am uh, studying you know, computer science along with psychology and sports management, something. So unique and so different is also going to be uh, um, offered. Ragni says, hope examination system changes. Kids are required to write word. But yes, that is what the government is aiming for. That, that is what the NEP is uh, aiming uh, for. But before I start uh, the dialogue where we will have an open house and we'll start discussing uh, certain uh, things, uh, a few things that I just wanted to also add on for those of you who may not be aware of it. One is that. Uh, uh, women, that is girls, are going to be allowed to join NDA. That means women can join right after 12th standard for a permanent commission in the army and they are going to be trained up with the boys. And you know that NDA candidates generally make it right up to the top levels and all that. So that is an opening that has come in. Nursing has been included in NEET. So those who want to study nursing also have to appear for the uh, NEET. The students who are going abroad to study MBBS will uh, make to come back and pass an examination, which is very tough. Just because you have a degree in medicine from a reputed university abroad does not qualify you to study, I mean, to practice medicine over uh, uh, here. Similarly, even the US has woken up and has brought in some changes. While either SAT or ACT were absolutely essential in most universities in USA for undergraduate admission, it is no longer so. At least now for this year, they have announced that we will not insist on SACT uh, uh, scores for uh, um, um, admissions. And finally, most important, the NEP says that the focus is going to be on teachers. And that is where, you know, what uh, even Rajni said, the examination system, children are being made to write word by word from uh, uh, textbooks. No, Anupama, you want to know if alternative schools like ICSC and IB are going to be scrapped out? No, not at all. No, there will not be a single board or anything. There's no indication in the NEB that they are going to restrict it to that. All boards of education will continue. In fact, with the liberalization that is coming in and allowing you know, foreign universities to come in, don't be surprised if more such boards or more such you know, systems of education enter into India and that's going to be wonderful for having a lot of uh, what do you say variety children will love to you know choose and select what they want to do I mentioned to you about the academic bank of credits so they will get credits from some one reputed university or college offers a particular course 
they will be able to pick up only that course from there and continue in their parent college and get their degree. All these wonderful things are going to happen subject to their being implemented in the right way, which always, you know, you know that there is a slip between the cup and the lip. So the tea is ready, the lips are ready, whether the tea reaches the uh, uh, lips or not, and how long it takes is going to be the question, but it is time for my tea break. And I'm going to request Seema to just give you a quick update on what is happening at the Banjara's NEP level, and then we go back to having a nice open house. Hi, so here in Banjara, we work very, very closely with children, school children, youngsters. A lot of counseling happens here, career counseling, aptitude test, all those things you're already aware of. Uh, but uh, apart from that, you know, uh, there is a lot of uh, things that need to be worked at an emotional level uh, with children, especially after the lockdown and all of that. So um, even in schools, at a school level, uh, you know, every school needs a counselor. And uh, a counselor, a good counselor can make an impact, a huge impact on, uh, you know, a child's life. So, uh, 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 you know, our course, Diploma in Counseling Skill, a course which is, which makes you a professional counselor, uh, you know, is uh, something that you learn in a very systematic step-by-step -step way. You learn, uh, you know, to uh, uh, counsel uh, children uh, with emotional uh, uh, needs, different types of uh, things, whatever, you know, it could be study related, it could be bullying, peer pressure, and uh, it could be things which are happening in their house. So a good effective counselor in a school or institution always uh, is uh, an asset and can make a difference to so many children's lives, right? So, um, and we are very proud that uh, in Banjara in the last 23 years, uh, there are many, many counselors uh, who have uh, been trained under uh, you know, Dr. Ali and team, and uh, they are working as professional counselors in uh, schools and colleges across uh, Bangalore. So uh, this year, of course, uh, you know, we, uh, the course has already started for four of our teams. Admissions are just about to close. Uh, already for one of our week, uh, weekday batches, we have closed admissions. Uh, Sunita has put up the dates also. Please uh, look at this. Today is the last date for our weekend team. If any of you is interested to become a professionally qualified counselor, uh, here are the dates. Another uh, week or two, uh, the other two teams also, the weekday teams, admissions will be closed. So the next admission for the year will start, I mean, will happen next year in July. So uh, this is the last chance if you want to become a professionally trained, and this doesn't take away from you can be working, you can be, uh, you know, in corporate or uh, working as a teacher or whatever, because you just have to come twice a week, right? So you can uh, still take up the weekend batch, but today is the last day. So please call up, the number is displayed uh, there. So please call up if you want to know more about the program. And uh, yes, with that, over to Adi. Yes. Uh, incidentally, I forgot to tell you, Seema mentioned about uh, um, counseling. Uh, counseling is going to be an essential part of the education process. It has been incorporated by the NEP that things like life skills and counseling should be incorporated by every educational institution. How they are going to do it, whether they will have the teachers trained up as counselors, whether they will appoint separate counselors, will depend on so many factors. But it is a fact that counseling, which up till now was only, you know, with a few selected schools or colleges is going to get a big boost. And I think it is absolutely necessary um, also. So Anupama says that I wanted to, yes, that I've already men mentioned to you, nothing will happen. Same way when Rajni said that the uh, examination system changes, a few small changes have come in. And we are expecting that as and when the NEP gets uh, you know, fully implemented, let it take a little bit of time, doesn't matter, let's not be in a hurry, one year, two years, we have to give to the you know, government machinery to move and to implement and all, but it will 
happen. The uh, examination system is also going to uh, come out with. I'm not saying there may be a drastic change in the system, but even minor changes, I think, are going to be a big relief and joy to the children that they find that things are not the same as they used to uh, be. Okay. Uh, uh, Niti is asking, how does this system impact or influence the existing system? My son is in first PUC now. So what is expected in the next few years? What is expected is that he will complete second PUC as of uh, now, and he will get into whatever uh, course he wants to get into, will no longer be a three-year degree course. It will probably be a four-year degree uh, course. So even if he wants to do BBA, BCA, BSc, BA, it will all be four-year degree courses. And I think that's a good sign because somehow the three-year degree courses always used to be looked down upon compared to the four-year professional uh, courses. So now these are also going to be on path, like how many of you may be aware about 10, 12 years back, uh, Indian Institute of Science started a four-year BS course, a Bachelor of uh, Science, but four-year course. And what they did uh, was they said for the first two years, learn all six branches of science and then select your specialization and study that for the next two years. So a few pioneering institutions have already implemented it quite successfully and children are very happy because there may be a child who is interested in science, basically not in engineering, but in science, but he doesn't know which part of science. So he doesn't want to commit himself, whether I want to be in chemistry or physics or whatever. So here's a chance. If the child is bright enough to get admission in Indian Institute of Science, he gets in over there, studies all six uh, you know, science subjects, that is maths, physics, chemistry, biology, uh, material sciences, and computer sciences. Studies all these six uh, uh, subjects and then decides his specialization and studies only that specialization for the next two years. So there's going to be much more of this sort of implementation in the time to come with the implementation of the uh, Say yes, Sandhya, vocational training will be given a boost. In fact, what the NEP says is that vocational training or the so called, you know, what we used to say extracurricular and all that will not be treated separately, will be part of the mainstream. So you may have somebody who says that I want to learn painting or I want to you know, be in sports or I want to be in something very unusual, which was up till now called vocational they will be part of it. So it will not be like the, the way it used to be looked down upon uh, earlier. It will be part of the basic, uh, uh, you know, system of how things are uh, going to uh, be. Uh, in Karnataka, we had a little bit of debate about the language thing. Uh, initially, the government said that we would like to uh, all the students to study Kannada as a compulsory subject for four semesters. You know, that's two years out of the four year uh, in degree course, but they have now changed it and they have said Canada is going to be compulsory for only one semester and the balance three semesters, a student can not only select any language that he wants, he can also change language. So if he studies a particular uh, subject, let's say he studies Sanskrit in the second semester, doesn't like it in the third semester, he can move on to French or Hindi or whatever he wants to uh, choose. So these are some of the things which I don't know how, when the implementation, the logistics, the administrative work will happen, but the intentions are very good that we would like, you know, children to have that flexibility, which was not being given uh, to them uh, so far of, because of various uh, um, uh, reasons. The other things, uh, um, um, uh, also that, uh, as I told you, there's going to be no rigid uh, uh, separation. Either you had to study science or commerce or arts, right? Now there's going to be a mixture of the uh, two. So children will have that opportunity to take one subject from here, one subject from uh, uh, there and make a combination of uh, that. That also has been implemented. For example, when the liberal arts uh, um, system came in about 15 years back with flame, uh, they were the first to offer these uh, sort of combinations of different types of uh, subjects and it was found to be very successful. I have personally visited and stayed in the campus there and seen how, you know, you produce a completely different genre of uh, uh, students who come out very, very, uh, you know, meaningful and very happy and very positive towards uh, uh, life. 
So this is now being implemented at the national uh, level. So earlier it was only the few pioneering institutions which used to take the initiative, go against the tide and put up. And you know, many parents used to question them that uh, what you are doing is right or no, no, everybody is not doing it. So here now all these institutions will now have the stamp of authority of the government and its policies. So knowing that the institutions, particularly those who are forward looking, who are wanting to do something different and something more meaningful, they will get wonderful opportunities and the freedom to do what they want to uh, do. This was not available uh, to them. I used to speak to so many college uh, people who used to say, we have to follow the university rules. I'm sorry, we cannot bring in the change because it's a university which uh, finally gives the degree. So now not only the university, but as I said, you know, even the government has brought in this uh, thing. Khadija says life skills will also be there. Yes, they have mentioned specifically that life skills will uh, and should be taught. Only thing is, again, the implementation of it. You see, now we are at that stage where a lot of questions are being raised about the implementation. You must have read in the media that when they started a helpline for NEP, they were getting 300 to 400 calls per day. And now with the educational institutions offering you know, uh, counseling and uh, information about NEP, the numbers at the central helpline have gone down. But now people are talking to the institutions and finding out how. You are also aware that there is a transition phase uh, uh, going on. Uh, Mayur says that my son is in 10. Next year he will be going to first uh, PUC. Will there be any change? Very likely that he is uh, you know, going to have a change. The PUC that will be there in 2022 may not be the same as it was in the previous uh, uh, years. So let him mentally be prepared. One is, as I told you, subjects. He may not have to restrict himself only to science or only to commerce or only to humanities. He may be able to take a combination of uh, that. Secondly, the methodology will uh, change. The preparation will uh, change. And uh, eventually, this uh, system which I have mentioned uh, um, earlier of uh, the 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 is going to be uh, uh, you know, implemented uh, into it. And uh, now, of course, those who are in 10th and uh, even in PUC, they will uh, uh, go ahead. Yes, Tadish has a very interesting question. How will NEP impact private kindergartens as only we have three years? Now, overall, the policy of the government is that small children should not be forced to do this rote learning, which is what, for example, the Montessori system says that you don't make a child sit down and start writing A, B, C, D. What good Montessori's do is they first improve the kinesthetic ability of the small uh, children. So they make them write in sand, for example. Or they make them do practical things like folding a napkin or working with some toys or you know picking up those uh, you have the rods which uh, determine different numbers and putting them together so instead of making them write two plus two and racking their head or just memorizing that two plus two is four it doesn't make sense there would be a two feet long rod and another two feet long rod and then when they put them together they will be able to see what it means actually to have a four feet long so experiential learning, that is what the government is intending to do. And they are going to give certain guidelines. After that, it will depend on the kindergartens and all this, how much they want to implement and they go ahead. But yes, that first five years, uh, as I said, five plus three plus three plus four, is, the government is recommending that it should be more of building up of the life skills of the child, the abilities of the child and not just uh, the uh, three R's, as we say, reading, writing, arithmetic, the focus will shift over there. Only when the child goes into the next phase, that is five, uh, after that, the three, that is when, you know, the focus will go more on the uh, uh, three R's, that is reading, writing, arithmetic. And in the third le level of the uh, five plus three, plus three, there will be a lot of opportunities for students to start branching out. Unlike up till now, till 10th standard, most of the children who were like, you know, in SSLC stream and all, did not have much of a choice of subjects. They had to study three languages, 
they have to study social science, they have to study science, and they have to study mathematics. So that is how the six uh, subjects were uh, sort of put in uh, place, and most of them had to do that. Now, when they come to that third level of 5 plus 3 plus 3, it is going to change. So eventually, we may not have PUC uh, colleges. People who have completed 5 plus 3 will go into that you know, three-year, uh, four-year, uh, this thing, 9, 10, 11, whatever you uh, say. And then they will move on to the degree uh, level. So I'm just giving you an overall picture about the strategies that have been laid down by the government, which I think are very, very meaningful and visionary. But I also want to caution you that, uh, you know, uh, things to what extent they will be implemented, what will be the resistance. We have had certain, you know, hurdles and things. You may remember a few years back when CBSE brought in the uh, CCE, that is continuous uh, um, evaluation, and the teachers were asked to go on evaluating children through the year, and certain amount of marks were allotted to it, and 10 standard board exam also was made optional. A child need not should, you know, appear for a board exam. All those were very good ideas which were brought in by CBSE, but for various reasons they did not. So CBSE had to go back to its own uh, the same. So all these hiccups will happen. Will uh, exam system like board exams change in the new system? It is anybody's guess, Lakshmi. I cannot predict whether it will change or not. But here you know something. The onus does not lie on the government. The onus does not lie on the policy makers. Now the onus lies on teachers, principals, administrators. How much do they realize that, yes, here is a good opportunity. The government has opened the doors for us to do something different and to do something meaningful. Will they do it or will they be again, like I was mentioning in the beginning of today's session, will they only be quota factories, which will only be producing robots? There was a very nice joke the other day. Somebody was telling me that uh, you know America and all started spending a lot of money on research to build robots so that you know the robots can take over the task which the uh, human beings are uh, doing and at one point they realized that why should we spend so many billions of dollars developing robots when we have these indian techies who are willing to work at a much lesser uh, uh, salary and do the same work 24 by 7 as robots do so in a light-hearted manner that is what you know, we need to see that are we going to produce only uh, uh, robots? Yes, Khadija, it could possibly be no exam, only assignment, but will it be practical? You know that in certain uh, times when they started allotting certain marks for the internal assessment, I would see a child getting 50% in the exam and 100% in the internal assessment. How can there be so much disparity? The teachers were told that, you know, no, no, our school's reputation is at stake. So give 100%, 95% to all the children, either 20 out of 20 or 19 out of uh, 20. So somewhere our, you know, attitude also has to change. I think even as parents, those of you who are parents of children, please ensure that the teachers are also given a free hand to do what they want. Because very often teachers say the parents come and pressurize us sir. they say my child should get marks and nothing else we don't care about the learning very sad that there are still a few parents who think in that uh, direction but as you know in real life that rote learning has already become very outdated manju says uh, hope there will be more focus on experiential learning which will require more training for the teachers as well yes i think teachers training is something which really lacks even our B ed uh, course, I think, needs a major uh, revamp, and other training courses for teachers should uh, come up from time to uh, time. These are all the things. Let us be optimistic. Let us hope that we are now that we are moving in the right direction. Let us hope that you know whatever time it takes, whatever hurdles and setbacks we have, eventually we move towards a better future for the youngsters of today, because. As a person who's been watching two generations of young people in India, let me tell you that we have got such untapped, such amazing talent among our children, not just among these so-called toppers and those who crack the 
IAS exam or the IIT exams and all. I'm even talking about small children in villages. The potential that they have if they are get given the right opportunities. And I'm really hoping and wishing that the NEP opens the doors for such uh, children. There's also a debate going on, as you know, about need. It is sub judice right now. The Supreme Court is going to give its final judgments. I'm not commenting on that. But it's just that we are now waking up to the fact that can we have an All India exam, one exam a few hours, and that determines whether this child becomes a doctor or stays back and does something very ordinary. That These are the type of questions which have been raised for years and years and years. And today, somebody has taken cognizance of it. The Supreme Court is thinking about it. Certain state governments have you know, risen up in revolt against the neat uh, examination, saying that you can't impose a one level on all the different states and all the different children. These are some of the things which uh, you know are in the pipeline. Finally, when uh, uh, they uh, uh, get implemented, how long it takes are the big question marks. But basically, yes, Balaji rightly says parents are only focusing on marks, but children should have more life skills. And uh, you know, that is what you know. parents are not understanding. Let us all put our heads together and tell them that now that government has taken this initiative, which uh, you know we were uh, waiting uh, for, let us work in those uh, um, areas. We have, for example, a concept of internship. How much is it actually being implemented? Internship, if you remember, started with medicine. What was in our good old days, they were called house surgeons. So when they completed their five years of uh, medicine, they were asked to be house surgeons for one year. They are called interns now. Rigorous training. There are times when interns have told me, two o'clock in the night, a man is dying. I have to do an emergency operation. None of the qualified doctors are available at that moment. I can't delay by half an hour for a doctor to get into his car and reach here. I have to do it. And I have done it, whether I've succeeded or failed. This is how today I am a doctor. And the same thing should filter into other areas, the practical uh, areas. One more very important area which we have been constantly working on and uh, giving uh, focus to is every child needs to be guided in the right direction. Just because the government has opened doors and said, you take one subject from science, one from commerce, you combine and you do. How do we do the selection? Career guidance, I think, plays a very important role. I have so far not seen anywhere in the NEP, but I do wish at the practical level that is also put down the same way as NEP has very specifically said that all educational institutions should have counselors. I really hope and wish that either the government makes it compulsory or the educational institutions themselves become more aware that now with so much variety and so much opportunities, we need to have career guidance either within the school itself if they can develop the manpower and expertise, otherwise seek help outside. We are doing it on a day-to-day -day basis. We provide free career counseling to anybody who walks in or emails to us or phones us. Every day I'm dealing with so many students, so many talented youngsters with so much potential, but no information, not even the basic information on how to select their uh, uh, careers. That there is a life beyond MBBS for those who fail in need, or rather, I won't even use the word fail in there. And those who don't get selected, their rank is a little bit you know, lesser than what is required in the number of seats that are there. Same thing like this uh, uh, serial called Quota Factory is uh, uh, depicting. There are some 5,273 seats in um, IITs. And Quota itself has got 100 times more of students over there. And yet they claim that we will guaranteed get you admission in IIT. For what? Firstly, is that child even aware that technology is the right Thing for him, does he have that aptitude? That is where we assess, we find out, we help the child to work into those uh, uh, things. Lakshmi says co curricular like arts and music has to be provided as optional subjects in engineering and medicine. It's quite likely, Lakshmi, because they have said that all of them, 
like I gave you the example of KLE University where I was there last week, and they have said now they've incorporated the law college into their, you know, uh, fold, and therefore engineering students will get an opportunity to get some exposure to law. The same way, it is quite likely that arts, music, all these are going to be incorporated into uh, these so-called professional uh, courses. Balaji says, Russian education system see and observe the child and what they are good and teach them the vocational skills in which they are passionate uh, about. Exactly, that's exactly what I was telling just now, that we need to observe a child, evaluate a child, assess a child. We are doing it at an individual level. Anybody who walks in or contacts us, we do it, but that's a drop in the ocean. No? How many can uh, we deal with? We need uh, 1,000 Banjara academies in the Bangalore city alone and then maybe 10,000 more all over the uh, country. Everywhere children need these, uh, you know, uh, connections and these little things. These are such basic things instead of all the time just, you know, uh, completing the uh, portions and making them mug up, which has been there traditionally, which, as I said, is not our fault. It was brought in by the British with a certain intention to train people to become good clerks and assistants. Today, the whole scenario is different. No? The needs of the education itself is to be redefined into what it is uh, today. And today, we are a free democratic country. We elect our leaders who make all these rules and regulations. It is up to us how we are going to implement uh, uh, these things. We have to take it forward. The time has come to stop criticizing anything and everything that you know, so-called authorities do know the school managements are like that. The, you know, uh, education department is like that. The government is like that. No, I refuse to accept those type of arguments. What am I doing about uh, uh, it? I'm always reminded of the famous quote of this great American president called John F. Kennedy. He had come out with a very simple quote saying, Ask not what your country can do for you, he said. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. I would talk that a little to say, ask not what the country can do for your child. Ask what you can do for your child. The child is tomorrow. The child is the future. NEP or no NEP, IITs or no IITs and uh, NEETs or no NEETs, these children are going to grow up, become adults, become professionals, and they are going to be running your city or society and your country when you are too old to do anything. And at that time, if you can sit back and relax and say, I have passed the baton to very good youngsters and they will take it forward. You're going to be spending your sunset years in a much, much better uh, way. Lakshmi has asked a very nice question. How can parents improve their knowledge for career guidance for their child? We always encourage the parents to come in and sit and discuss. There are so many parents who come in with, you know, misconceptions. If my child doesn't do that, what is it? Just... Uh, Yesterday or day before, there was this parent who was saying, if my child doesn't do engineering, then what else can he do, sir? He's not interested in medicine. What else can he do? Though I was a little irritated at that moment, I said, no. Nobody has taught this parent, poor thing. Nobody has given him any exposure. He's a small businessman running his shop, and obviously he doesn't know anything about it. So I sat down with him. I took a printout of a long list of careers showing him that in each of these careers, your child can excel. But what primarily it boils down to is to help a child take the right decision. Balaji says only mugging notes by children and garbage in and garbage out will not help the child with the actual education system and children learn what they live with, uh, uh, you know, as they have to adapt to the evolving global education order. And thankfully, the Indian education order is moving towards the global education order. We will have foreign universities coming in and the government has already given them clearance. Indian universities will set up more and more campuses abroad and get better exposure and come back and you know share that uh, with us. The new systems will come in place. The flexibility will come in. Now the onus has come back to each one of us 
at an individual level what we can do to help you know, the uh, children of today. And very important, by helping our children, we are helping ourselves. Don't forget that. So with that, enjoy the fact that our country is doing wonderful work, is making those strides. And let us all be proud to be Indians and help the system to improve on the education system. Thank you. Bye-bye. And Jai Hind.